All right, so in this project, we're going to build a scroll animation, which is, is pretty simple. We can most likely do this all in one video. However, it's very useful. You might see these websites where you start scrolling and parts of the site, you know, images or sections of the website start to come in. So I just created these content blocks and you can see there's three to begin with. But if I go and I start to scroll down, the next one comes in from the left go down some more next one comes in from the right and it's going to alternate where it comes in from. So we're going to use CSS transitions to have it come in smoothly. We're going to use JavaScript to basically tell where the trigger point is for the next box to come in. And then we're going to add a specific class to show it. And then if I go back up, it'll remove the class when it hits the trigger point and it'll all, you know, slide back out. All right, so I think it's it's really useful. You can use this in a, a lot of different UIs and, and different websites. So that's it. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is a very useful but simple project. So we can probably get this done in one video. So let's jump into our project starter here. And for the title, I'm going to just call this scroll animation. And we're going to go down here into the body. And all we really need is a bunch of boxes, which would ultimately contain your website content. We're going we're not going to waste time creating content. We're just going to have a bunch of boxes and then apply the animation to them. Uh, I am just going to put an H1 here and say scroll to see the animation. And then under that, we'll have a class of box and I'm just going to put an H2 with the word content. We'll just copy this down. We'll have a bunch of these. Okay. Now, ultimately, like I said, you would have these would be cards or just sections of your website, whatever it is that you want to bring in with that slide in animation. So let's go into our style sheet here and I'm going to add a uh, background color. And let's make that hexadecimal EF EFE DD six kind of a tannish background and then let's do let's see display flex justify direction okay so that's good I'm gonna get rid of the height and the, the overflow hidden because we do want a scroll bar obviously this is a scrolling animation and then for the h1 I'm gonna just set margin to 10 pixels and then let's create the style for the boxes so I'm going to use a background color of steel blue to make the text color white. And I'm going to display flex because I just want to align the H2 that's inside to the center, both horizontally and vertically. So display flex, align items, center and justify content center. And let's set a width of 400 pixels on the box and let's do a height of 200 pixels. Okay, we want to separate them out. So let's do a margin of 10 pixels and let's do a border radius. So border radius will do 10 pixels and let's add a little box shadow. Obviously this stuff isn't needed, but I just want to make it look decent. So we'll do two pixels and four pixels for the offsets five pixels for the blur RGBA for the color, which is going to be 000, 0, 0, 0 0.3 for the alpha value. And then for the animation, we're going to use the transform property with translate X, because that's what we want to do is move these along the X axis. So initially let's set box the class of box transform. And we want to set the translate Y. I mean, I'm sorry, translate X, which is horizontal. It's the X axis. Um, oops, I forgot my semicolon up here. And I'm going to set this to two. So zero is the default. If I set it to zero, there's no change. If I set it to, let's say, 100 pixels and save, you can see it gets moved over 100 pixels, gets moved over to the right. So what I'm going to do is set this to 200%, which is going to move it way off the screen to the right. And then what's going to happen is if we have the class of show, so let's say box with the class of show, then we're going to set the transform and translate Y. I'm tra 
translate x to zero, which is the default. So if I go over here and I apply a class of show to this first one, it's going to show because it's in its regular position. The rest of them are still 200% over here. And then what we'll do is we'll have a transition so that when that class gets added, it tr transitions in smoothly from over here. All right, so we want to add a transition on the transform property. We'll do a 0.4 second duration with an ease effect. Okay, now the way it is now, if we add the JavaScript and we add the scroll functionality and they come in, they're all going to come in from this side. I actually want every other one to come in from the from different sides. So what we can do is right here, let's take our box class and let's use nth of type, which is a pseudo selector, and we can select all of the even elements, all the even boxes. Okay, so basically, you know, every other one. And what we'll do is instead of setting the initial uh, so the initial transform translate X to 200%, we're going to set it to negative 200%, which is going to put put them over here. So all the even ones are now over here. All the odd ones are on this side. Okay, and then when we have them come in, when we, when we dynamically add the class of show, they're going to come in from different sides. All right, and we have to also um, figure out where we when we want them to come in as we scroll. So that should do it for the CSS. Actually, I just want to make the H2 a little bigger. So let's say box H2. Set the font size to 45 pixels. <clears throat> and then we'll jump into our JavaScript. And first thing we want to do is bring in our boxes. So let's say const boxes and document dot query. We want query selector all because there's more than one. So this will put it into an array or a, a node list. And then we want to fire off an event when we scroll. So on the window, we're going to add an event listener of scroll. And when that happens, we'll have a function called check boxes because we, we want to check um, the positioning of each box. And, and a box could be anything. It could be any section of your website or an image or, or whatever. So we're going to have this function check boxes and we need to figure out where is the trigger point? Where do we want, you know, when we're scrolling down, where do we want them to start to come in? So we're going to be using window dot inner height. In fact, we can just console log that so you can see and we're, we're going to run check boxes to begin with anyways right here so we'll go ahead and run that and then if i open this up you'll see 888 is the window height not counting the console if i move this console up and i reload now that the height is 406 so we're getting the the inner height and we want the trigger point so basically where we want you know it's a it's a scroll in um we're going to want that to be a little less than the inner height and it, and we can't just use a fixed number because the height could be you know different on at any at any point so uh, what we're going to do is divide this by five and then multiply it by four so now let's let me just reload this so you can see the height here is 666 if i save that now this gives us this equation here gives us 532. All right, so that's going to be our trigger point. So I'm actually going to put this into uh, a variable. We'll call it trigger bottom. So where in the in the window do we want it to trigger? Um, so we have that. Now let's go ahead and take our boxes, which we brought in, which is a node list that we can loop through. And we'll say for each box, uh, yeah, for each box, let's get the top of the box. And when I say box, you know, I mean this, the elements here. So const box top, I'm going to set this to 
the the whatever blocks we're dealing with because remember we're looping through them and we there's this method called get bounding client rect so I actually have this uh, I want to show you this real quick just so you understand what this does. So this method returns what's, what's called the DOM rect object. And DOM rect, it's just basically a rectangle, describes the size and position of a, a rectangle. So it returns that, providing information about the size of an element and its position relative to the viewport. So where in the viewport is it? And there's a bunch of properties that we can use on this. If we go down here, we have the X, Y, width, height, where it is, where the top of it is, where the right, where the bottom, where the left of it is. So we want to see where the top of that particular box is. So we're going to add here dot top. OK, so that will give us the top value. Um, and then all we need to do after that is see if the top of the box is less than the trigger bottom. If it is, we want to add the class of show. If it's not, if it's more, then we want to remove the class of show. So let's say if the box top is less than the trigger bottom, then let's take that box and let's add a class. So classless.add of show else, then we want to remove it. So box.classList dot remove show. OK, so now I'm going to go and just remove this show that we added manually. Now notice that it's only showing the first three because those are in range. Now when we start to scroll, it's going to fire off an event. And the reason we see these come in initially is because of this right here. If we don't have that, we're not going to see them because it hasn't this hasn't fired off yet. If I scroll, it does. I mean, if you want that functionality where it doesn't show it until you scroll, that's fine. But usually you would show everything above the fold. So we run that initially first. Then we start to scroll. And as soon as this is true, as soon as the top of the next box is less than the trigger bottom point, which is a little less than the, you know, the entire height of the viewport, it's going to come in because it adds that class of show. And what that class of show does is sets it to its normal position. Now, if it's even, it it's starts over here, so it comes in from that way. If it's not even, it starts over here and comes in from that way. So every other one comes in from a different direction. And as we scroll up, it's still going to fire off this event and it's still going to check this. So if this is not true, it'll remove the class. So as we scroll up, you'll see that they'll start to go out. Now, one thing I just noticed is I do have a horizontal scroll bar here and I don't want that. So in my CSS, I'll just add on to the body here and I'll say overflow uh, overflow X because we this is the X axis scroll bar. We're going to set that to hidden so that will get rid of that horizontal scroll bar. All right, so pretty easy. And, and I mean, a lot of people use jQuery for something like this or a library like Animate on Scroll. Animate on Scroll is actually a really cool library. And if you want to do some funky stuff, then you can use that. But I mean, if, you, if it's just something simple and you're just bringing in elements when you scroll down, this is very lightweight, you know, no extra libraries or anything. And it's really easy to do. So hopefully you guys found this useful and I'll see you in the next project.